السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless not only the inhabitants of this household and all those who are here right now but the entire ummah may Allah bless every single one of us and our offspring those to come up to the end of time Amen. Amen. I remember the last time I was here I said the sound in here is better than some of the masajid <laughs> so it's, it's getting better Alhamdulillah uh, it is normally quite easy to speak when the sound is correct. When the sound is not correct, it becomes more difficult and stressful, so we speak for less. I have been asked to speak on a certain topic by a colleague of mine, and by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I wish to introduce it in a specific way. My brothers and my sisters, one day the phones will be ringing. One day the phones will be ringing. Mobile phones will be ringing, landlines will be ringing, maybe nowadays we can even say Twitter and Facebook will be active with some news. So sometimes if you have a phone call at say 3 in the morning, does your phone normally ring at 3 in the morning? Does it ring at 3 in the morning? No. So if your phone rings at 3 in the morning, what do you think? It will be about. Can someone answer me? Bad news. Some bad news. Do you know that one day the phones will be ringing with news about you? Have you ever thought of that? One day the phones will ring and when someone answers it, they will say bad news. What's the bad news? Such and such a person has just passed away. That name will be yours. You have to think of this. We have to because every time we get news, we see a message, such and such a person passed away. We say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. May Allah grant them Jannah and so on. One day, the name will be mine and yours. We cannot run away from that. This is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept it. Every single one has to go through the door. Everyone has to go through the door. We know the common saying that says, Al mawtu babun wa kullun nasi dakhiluhu. Death is a door that every single person shall go through. So some people look at it and they are very fearful. You know, I don't want to die. But even if you don't want to die, you are still going to die. So that's not an option. It's not an option. You can die young or you can die a little bit later. Some people are given a little bit of age. When they become of age, for example, sometimes they are bedridden, they lose their weight, and then they go. Those have a bigger opportunity to turn to Allah than the others who might have gone suddenly. Suddenly, the person is gone. Maybe he didn't have a chance to even say goodbye, to say anything, obviously. Some people, they prepare their will in advance. They talk to people, look, I'm not feeling well. You know, I, I might a few weeks, I might die. This might happen. This is my will. This is this. This is this. I'm old or I'm so and so. So they are preparing for it. They ask Allah's forgiveness and Allah forgives them by the will of Allah. By His will, He forgives them. But the question is, we have, do we have a guarantee that we are going to become old? And we will become sick and ill and then we will say goodbye to everyone and then we will die. Do we have that guarantee? No. no. No matter how old we are, a lot of the times somehow we feel in a lot of cases that I will survive. Not me. I won't, you know, it's not me. So it's just a feeling. We start thinking, me, die? Until we dead, then the others feel, me, die? And it carries on. And then they die. And then the others say, we die? Then they die. Allahu Akbar. So this is why, how should we look at it? Because if we become scared, we will get depressed. Completely depressed in the sense that we won't even want to go out and eat. Because we're going to say, what's the point of this food? I'm dying. What's the point of getting married? I'm going to die. What's the point of having children? I'm going to die. And then we look at our kids and we say, well, what's the point? He's going to die or she's going to die. That is a very depressing way of looking at it. There is a plan of Allah that we need to understand. He wants us to go through 
a certain type of a life known as the life of this world. It's only one type of life. There is more than one type of life. There is the eternal everlasting life that exists that we shall get into once the temporary life which is roughly 60 to 70 years is over. Then we get into another life. Not in reincarnation, no. But in terms of the eternal life and the resurrection that will happen. There is a difference. Some people believe that if you die, if you led a good life, you become a bird. You become something sweet, something nice, a little gazelle. You know, people look at you and enjoy it, so on. And some people believe that, the same people would believe that if you die after having led a bad life, you become a scorpion or a snake. That is reincarnation. In Islam, we believe that is wrong. We believe that is wrong. There is no reincarnation. But there is another life which is known as the life after death. The eternal life. That is through resurrection. When we die, this body that I have right now, its functions will be over. So when someone comes and greets me or greets you or greets at a graveyard, it is Allah who makes the individual here, but not with these ears. Because these ears could be already decomposed, completely gone. This whole body will be gone. They say that when a person's body, when a person has died, there is something interesting that happens here. You might have heard me say it. Your name is no longer connected to your body. Have you ever thought of that? The minute you die, your name and your body are separated. So, say for example, someone's name is... I'm going to use a common name. Say for example, someone's name is Ismail. Okay? When they die, and say they died in that room, for example, just an example, people will not say, where is Ismail? Bring him here. They will say, where is the body? Bring it here. Did you wash the body, brother? Did you enshroud the body? Did you bury the body? Your name is irrelevant. It's over. It's gone. Why? Because the name is no longer connected to the body. The body was temporary. It's gone. It's known as the body. Did you bury the body, brother? No one ever says, did you bury Ismail? No one ever says, bring Ismail here. No, they say the body. That is very interesting because where is Ismail? That's the question. Well, he is gone to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is now in another life. And that life is far better than this one. It is eternal and it is where he will be getting the good for whatever he has done. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will forgive his shortcomings where he has gone wrong. So it's very important for us to know that as Muslims, we should be looking forward to this eternal life via preparation for it. How do you prepare for it? This afternoon I spoke on truthfulness and how to be truthful to yourself. Truthful to Allah and the Messenger and truthful to those around you and truthful to what you claim you believe. We say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. We need to be truthful to that statement so that when we die, we will actually get to where we were expecting to get all along. May Allah grant us paradise. So it's a very important topic because many people fear it. You know, uh, the topic of death is not an easy topic to talk on because it's very dear to the heart. Everyone loves dear life, as they call it. Everyone wants to cling to life. You know, if something happens, we will spend all our money trying to improve our health because we want to cling to life. But we don't realize, my brother and my sister, there is another life better than this one. You know, it's like, for example, we get cozy in a house. You know, when you live in a house for a while, you get cozy. So with your eyes closed, you can go to the bathroom, you can turn on the tap, your eyes are closed. And you enjoy the shower, for example, you have everything set. You know, the, you can get into your bed, you have a beautiful sleep, you know everything because you like the house. You've been staying in this, in this house for 20 years. So a lot of the times it happens with the women, with the sisters, that when the husband says, look, we're buying another house, a big house. Depending, if they are very comfortable in this house, they will say, we don't want to shift. And the husband has to market the idea to say, you know what, there is a better kitchen. Oh, that's, that's a good one. 
You know what? There is a lot of facility. You know what? It is like this. It is like that. And you're marketing this beautiful house. In it, there is a, there is a, a fountain. You know, there's a little fish pond as you walk. You know, there's a bridge that comes and there lights and there's this. And then they, he will take you there and he will show you. And even if you're thinking to yourself, I'm, we're going to move everything. We're going to do this. We're going to do that and so on. And in your heart, you don't want to shift because to you, your house is comfortable and cozy and everything is good. And somehow, he might come and say, listen, we are going. Oh, what a husband, mashallah. We are going. And once you shift there and you realize, wow, this is such a beautiful house. I was just worried about this for nothing. Yet I've got to a house that is so, so good that the air conditioning unit no longer is operated by remote, but it's by voice. Amazing. Brilliant. So you just say 20 degrees and next thing you just hear a sound tiddy, and it goes to 20. Wow. You want water and you say, you can say and you can dish out an instruction to the kettle and it starts boiling. Imagine. So what would happen? Before we went there, we were anxious about this place. That Are we really going to go to a nice place? I'd rather stay in this place that I know than to shift to this other place. I can give you one real life example. Those of you who go to Makkah, you know, many years ago, the hotels were different from now. So we became comfortable in some hotels and it was hard for us to shift to the big buildings, you know. And suddenly what happened is we found ourselves with no option but to go into the big buildings. And then we said, oh, this place is lovely. Subhanallah. So that is how we treat life, real life. We are so comfortable, but this is useless compared to what is waiting for us on the other side. But when we get there, we will laugh or, or we may, maybe not, the, the term laugh might not be accurate, but we will be surprised to see that what we were fearing is actually far better than what we had in the previous temporary life. Because the life after death is a complete life. It is an everlasting life. There is no fear of death anymore. A lot of the fears that people have are gone. And you know what? You get yourself to a good place known as paradise. And there you look like what you want to look like. Imagine you don't need no more makeup, no more combing your hair, no more worried about this, no more bathroom and so on. Nothing, everything gone. You just think about something and subhanallah, wow, Allahu Akbar. So I always ask a question to people. Who wants to go to Jannah? Let's, let's answer ourselves by putting our hands up. Who wants to go to Jannah? Paradise. All of us. Mashallah. Brilliant. May Allah grant us Jannah. Who wants to die? Put your hand up. <laughs> no one. You see, those two questions are connected to each other. Because how are you going to go to Jannah? <laughs> Everyone wants to go to Jannah. No one wants to die. So Allah says, don't worry. I will take you away. I will take you away. We are going. It's over. Remember I told you moments ago, we are shifting the house. It's over. It's an instruction. So we are going. So this is Allah. If He had left it to us, we would waste our time in this world for 100, 200 years, 100 or 200 years without realizing that subhanallah, we have a better place waiting for us. But there is one thing that needs to be mentioned. For that place, we need a little bit of preparation by the will of Allah. A little bit of preparation. You know, if we have, for example, uh, a job, that job will earn us a salary. But it comes with instructions. It comes with rules and regulations. It comes with a time. At a certain time, you need to arrive at, at work. At a certain time, you shall leave. At a certain time, you'll have lunch. And for example, if you are a salesman or sales rep or someone, you know, in that particular line, they may tell you, your employer may tell you that you will achieve a commission if you work harder. The more you sell, the more you get. For example, a bonus or a promotion. So we work hard. None of us wants to sit on the same position for a long time. We will start off, you know, you start off, you work hard, you prove yourself, your bosses see you and they promote you and go up until one day you might take the place of that boss of yours and become the boss. And thereafter you might decide, you know what, now I've had enough, it's the time for someone else to be the boss and I can do something else. So all this shows you that we want to progress in life. 
But that progress will not happen unless we are disciplined, we have hard work, accountability, and we are people who are responsible. So the same rule applies for paradise. The same rule applies for Jannah. We get to work. What time? Fajr. Don't look at it as a job. But if that is what will wake you up, then no problem. Look at it however you want to look at it. Get up. That's the point. Zuhur, you're supposed to clock in again. Click. You know they have it here in Malaysia and in other countries as well. You have the card that clocks you into work. As you put it in, it tags your time and you take it out. That's your card. We clock it for Fajr, we clock it for Dhuhr, we clock it for Asr. When we have clocked the card five times, you know that's my paradise. You can, at the end of the day, when you're reclining back, you put your card on the side and say, MashaAllah, I've achieved something great. We are honest. We learn. We learn more about Jannah. Like I started by saying, people are scared. Do you know why they're scared? Because they lack knowledge. They don't know. If you know the goodness of what is waiting for you, you won't mind meeting with Allah. All you do, Rather than being depressed and fearful, you just become a person who's concerned. There's a difference between the two. You are concerned, meaning you have hope in the mercy of Allah because you have tried. T-R-Y, try, try. What is in my hands is the trial. The rest is in the hands of Allah. And one of the biggest methods of earning the pleasure of Allah is to constantly repent. Even if you think you haven't sinned. Because sometimes there are things we have done unknowingly. We ask Allah's forgiveness. And we progress in life. And sometimes, even if we haven't done things, but the fact that we are asking Allah to forgive us, it elevates our status. That's why Muhammad used to seek forgiveness so many times a day. One narration says up to 100 times a day. And it's a correct narration. Did he need it? He didn't. But status being elevated. I'm asking Allah, you are my creator. Forgive me. You know when you have a boss, when you have a boss, who's a real, real high individual, well looked, up, well looked up to by entire society, and he is very respectful, he's been given lots of awards and so on. The minute he walks in here, you feel something. Hey, that's the boss. Don't make a joke, you know. You, you nudge each other, hey, you know, he's here. And everyone is quiet, and people are in awe. Wow, this is the big boss, he's just entered. And you know that he, if he says something, you say, okay, no problem, and you get it done. Agreed? Because he's the boss. What about the one who made you? He made you. He created you. He gave you your identity, your hands, your everything. You know, your thumbprint when you print it. It's totally different from everyone. Who did that for you? It's Allah, your maker. Can't we treat him with a little bit of respect? Subhanallah. Don't we feel within ourselves that we owe him the obedience of instruction, beautiful instructions he has. He did not keep us in sajda for our entire lives. He did not treat us like an eight to five job that, that needs, you know, consistency for so many hours. No, he tells you, fulfill your obligations, enjoy what is in the world. But remember, what you owe me is truthfulness, it is accountability, it is worshipping me alone, following what Muhammad, my, I, the messenger I sent you, following the message and so on being good to your friends, being a, an asset to those around you, you know, uh, not dividing people, but rather uniting them, bringing them together on a common message and so on. This is the type of a good Muslim that would actually achieve that paradise because he is fulfilling what his Lord wants him to fulfill, his maker. So the day we are dying, we should say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or, you know, when we are getting to death, it would be such that we would be feeling within ourselves, Ya Allah, I've tried my best and I have hope in your mercy that you will accept my trial and forgive my shortcomings. This is it. I've tried my best. And Ya Allah, as a human, I may have faltered here and there. Forgive me for whatever I've done, knowingly and unknowingly. Some of the sins are major. They require tawbah. They require specific repentance. And some of the sins, they are minor. They, but still, they would require asking Allah's forgiveness. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. So my brothers and sisters, the, the, the point I'm trying to raise this evening, and I'm sure you've picked it up, is that every one of us shall be the talk of the town or the talk amongst our relatives the day we go. Just like others have been the talk within our own phones and our own systems and our own communication systems, a day will come sooner or later when I will be that talk. All I need to do is ask Allah's forgiveness 
have hope in the mercy of Allah, look forward to the meeting with Allah and understand that this life is limited. So as much as Allah has told me that I need to look after my health, which is uh, an act of worship, I need to look after myself and make sure that I don't throw myself into destruction. But I need to realize as a mu'min and as a believer that a day will come when I will have no option but to return back to the one who made me and I know for a fact it is better on the other side. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us to that particular beautiful place. May He unite us there in the same way He has unite us, united us here. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of you and all the listeners as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.